Thank you very much, and good morning. I want to uh, take care of a little house cleaning first. It's, uh, it's important that you know, clearly, elections are upon us. Uh, you wouldn't be here listening to speeches and vetting candidates if it wasn't. Uh, so I want to make sure that you're ready to go vote. Uh, clearly, we're coming up on a primary here on August 8th. And if you are not going to be there on, on election day, I want you to make sure that you're prepared uh, to vote absentee. If you are going to be voting absentee, your circuit clerk's offices are open every day, 8 to 5. And the next two Saturdays, they'll be open from 8 to noon. So I want you to be prepared for that. Uh, also, if you're going to be voting affidavit ballot for some reason, uh, make sure that you bring your ID there. Uh, so we'll be talking a little bit more about that later. But I want to prepare you for election day. That's what's most important about this office and this season. So be ready for that. I think it's important uh, with elections uh, to have your family with you. And my girls are here today. They're out in the front row here, and Lauren's with me behind. Uh, but I was eating lunch the other day, and we were uh, talking to the waitress after lunch was over with, and I was talking to her about our school and what she was doing and uh, where she's going to be in the next few years and whether or not she wanted to come back to Mississippi. So I was trying to encourage her to do so. Well, the entire time, little Cora Beth, who's on the front row here, was tapping me on the leg. And we've been teaching Cora Beth about, listen, when adults are talking, you've got to let them finish their conversation, and then you can kind of ask your question. And so she kept looking up at me and tapping me on the leg, and so finally I looked down and said, baby, what is it? She said, Dad, make sure you tell her what you're running for. So it takes all of us, and I appreciate Cora Beth, my little campaign assistant here being with us today, but it's, it's important to have our family, and I'm honored by them. It's one of God's greatest gifts to me. So uh, Lauren and the girls, thank you for being here with us today. It's important also uh, to remind you that we've been working hard to restore confidence in our election process here in Mississippi. Uh, we've done a lot of work here the last four years, and I can tell you this, I can walk out of the back of the office, turn the lights off, and say I left it better than I found it, as it is. We've had a lot of good work with our legislators, and there are three that I want to thank specifically. Uh, Representative Brent Powell, I'm not sure if he's here today, Senator Jeff Tate, and Representative Price Wallace. Uh, those have been on the front lines working to get bills out of the committee process, off the floor, and then on to the governor for his signature. I want to highlight just a few of them really quickly, things that we have brought to the office in our last four years. Number one, proof of citizenship, making sure that only United States citizens are voting in our elections. Incredibly important for us. Number two, machines with paper verifiable trails. There have been questions about machines, but by 2024, all Mississippi counties will have paper verifiable trails. So if there's ever a question about the machine, you can bring the paper and count it up. And that paper is what will win the day. So making sure we're returning confidence. We've got voter roll maintenance. I told y'all before, when I came in, 43 of the 82 counties in Mississippi had 90% or more of the voting age population on the registered voter rolls. We've cut that in half. We've got more work to do, but we're making that happen. It's important. If you don't have clean voter rolls, you can't have trusted elections. So that's really important for our counties. By the way, this is a bottom-up state. The hard work is done at the local level. So I want to say a thank you to our circuit clerks and commissioners but I also want to let you know, those are the folks that you need to be holding accountable to make sure that our voter rolls are clean, that, I, that elections are ran cleanly at the county level. So make sure that you understand that. Post-election audits. A lot of folks said, hey, you're just mad because uh, President Trump lost the election, so Republicans won't post-election audits. I want to remind you back in 2016 when President Trump won, the Democrats lost. And Hillary Clinton and John Podesta started a new organization, and basically they looked at what, what can we do with elections? How do we make elections better? One of the recommendations, post-election audits. Elections shouldn't be about Republican or Democrats. It should be about what's right. And that's what we're doing to the Secretary of State's office. You're going to be seeing post-election audits coming. Over the next four years, we're going to audit all 82 counties to make sure they're following the law as passed by the legislature. And I think that's really important as well. We banned Zuckerbucks, private dollars coming into our elections. We banned ballot harvesting, which is in a lawsuit now. We increased funding for counties for cybersecurity and election integrity. We've got a, a program going on around, right now called Elections 101, where we're educating Mississippians on the entire process. We think that's important. If you understand what happens with your ballot when you go in and cast your vote, all the way to when it's counted, if you understand how to register to vote, by the way, we've registered close to 240,000 new Mississippians since I've been in office. It's never been easier to register to vote or vote in Mississippi. The records show that. But I want to make sure that you understand with Elections 101, we're educating Mississippians. And if they're educated and feel more confident in the process, they're going to show up and vote. So they're really important. My Election Day, another one we're doing. If you vote absentee or affidavit, you can now track your ballot to know where it is. Where is it in the process to make sure that you understand your ballot was counted? We've got more work to do. One of the things with elections is campaign finance. We've heard a lot of talk about that the last couple of days. So we're working on overhauling campaign finance right now in our office. 
We'll be going to the legislature talking about campaign finance a lot the next session. And so I want you to understand three things that we're going to be working on. Number one, we're going to make sure we have fully searchable campaign finance reports and lobbying reports, making sure that there's clarity there, that you can search and understand where people's money is coming from for their campaigns. Number two, we're going to do away with the old retirement accounts. Far too many legislators have this little nest egg, this little golden retirement account. That's not what that money was for, so we want to do away with those. And then lastly, enforcement. You've seen many people talking about the lack of enforcement of campaign finance laws here in Mississippi. I want to be very clear here. I do not want more authority. I don't seek for more power for our office. But when people will not do their jobs, I will always stand in the gap for Mississippians. <clears throat> you, you've heard us talk about Tackle the Tape. I encourage you to go, if you've not seen Tackle the Tape, go to our website and understand the value of cutting the regulatory burden on our small businesses here in Mississippi. Extremely important. We've been written up in Forbes magazine. I've talked to the White House previous administration on a national teleconference saying what we're doing here in Mississippi. Just last week, two weeks ago, we were awarded the Ideas Award from Secretaries of State from across the country on the most innovative initiative in the country, right here in Mississippi. So I encourage you to go to Tackle Tate website to understand as small business owners, if you see a regulation, if you see a statute, if you see an ordinance, see something at the federal level, doesn't matter what it is, I want you to let us know about it so we can help you either cut that burden or navigate it. People say, Michael, what does that mean? I want to give you a story really quickly on the ground. We had a, a small business owner here call me a few weeks ago. He's actually from the local area. And he said, hey, I'm opening a grocery store and I've got this issue with USDA. And I said, well, look, you understand USDA is above my head. That's, that's federal level. He said, yeah, but you said anybody. So yes, sir. Uh, he called me on the carpet with that one. So I called USDA. The state director was out of town, so I sent an email kind of overviewing the situation and got an email back. The email back was just the phone number. That's it. No name. No, this is the department you're dealing with. No email address. No nothing. So I sat there thinking, I'm, I'm the sitting secretary of state, not Michael Watson, but the sitting secretary of state, and I can't get help for a small business here in Mississippi. So I fired an email, uh, typed it up really quickly, and thought, you know what? Uh, I can't send that one. I'm going to erase it. It's a little bit too hot. I typed another one, I erased it too. Finally on the third one, I got diplomatic enough to send it. I get an email back shortly thereafter, another phone number, that's it. So I called uh, Doug Davis, Cindy High Smith's chief of staff, and I said, Doug, I need some help with USDA. Within two days, we had the situation resolved, and that small business was able to open its doors. And I sat there and thought, you know what? Imagine a small business owner who isn't the Secretary of State, who doesn't have the cell phone number to the chief of staff or the United States Senator, trying to fight this regulatory burden at the federal level. That's killing businesses all across this country. That's the importance of having an advocate at the Secretary of State's office to help cut the regulatory burden for our small businesses. So we're really excited about that work. We've got one more thing we're we'll doing to make it easier to do business in Mississippi. It's called a one-stop shop. So we're gonna make sure that all Mississippians who start a business will have a single platform to interact with all agencies around the state. It cuts out confusion, it right-sizes state government, and I'm going to be talking more about that later, but I want you to understand more help is coming for our small businesses. We talk a lot about businesses, and uh, one of the things that we've been doing with our office is, is you look around and you meet with business owners, and they have different questions about different sectors of the economy. And as the Secretary of State, we have really connectivity with all businesses across our state. So one of the things that we're going to start now is working on different task forces. And I saw a recent article the other day about healthcare in Mississippi and about how nobody's wanting to tackle that and dig into it and fix it, solve it. So we started a healthcare task force a few months ago. And as I was calling these leaders of different agencies and of, of different entities around the state, asking them, hey, are y'all sitting down to have conversations to fix this situation that Mississippians deserve solutions for? Every single one of them said, no, we're really not. No, no one's really sitting down talking to each other. So we convened our first task force. It was phenomenal. The ideas that are out there, Mississippians are smart, they're resilient, and they're hardworking. So we're working on not only healthcare, but other sectors across our state to make sure that Mississippians are well represented. Speaking of, it's been fun for me to go across the national stage talking about Mississippi innovation, talking about Mississippi leading the country in election integrity and cutting the regulatory reform across this nation. People are recognizing something good is happening in Mississippi. Far too many times, I think we don't believe in ourselves. We've heard this national narrative that said, oh, it's just Mississippi. You know, they don't wear shoes. Uh, they don't have schools down there. This national narrative that beats us down. Too many times, as Mississippians, we believe that. I'm here to tell you today is a different day in our state. 
as we continue to see national recognition for the works that we're doing here in Mississippi, we are literally leading the country. I hope that you'll join me in continuing that fight. I pray that God would bless you, bless your families, bless our state, and bless this great United States of America. Thank you.